Hello everyone, welcome back to my series of turning an alternator into a brushless DC motor. So in this video, we're going to get down to modifications to the alternator itself. Now as you can see here, I have two alternators. Now any alternator will work. I would say as long as it's, I wouldn't look at some of the big large alternators for like 24 volt charging systems but car alternators truck alternators they'll work great this one here was off of a little toyota car and this was here was off of a little truck that i had given to me all right so what do you have to do to the alternator itself some of this i'm not going to get super super in depth with because it will depend on your alternator but it should basically be pretty much the same. And some of it, you may have to use some imagination with. All right, well, let's get into it. What do you have to do? Well, the first thing you have to do is the back of the alternator, strip everything off of it. There'll be a set of a diodes on it and the regulator. And in the middle here, there is a set of brushes. Now, them set of brushes should come off on their own. So what you want to do is strip everything off down to your individual wire connections. Now you'll have four of them on your alternator. Doesn't matter which one it is. This one here happened to have these little ring terminals on the ends. And this alternator has just wires. So once you have it stripped down, to this point have your alternator stripped down to this point and a question i get all the time is how do i identify what connection is what well this is easy so i have this alternator right here pretty much already all tore down now when you pull the backs off of these be very careful that way you don't break it. A lot of times the bearing can be corroded up in it or the shaft corroded up in the bearing, something like that. So now I have it stripped down. Now some alternators, you don't have to do this. You don't have to pull your backside off, but it's a handy thing to do anyways to identify your wiring connections. So I have four wires sticking up on this one. Now, try and get up here nice and close and see. You notice this one here, this connection right here has three wires all running into one connection. And the rest of them are just one, one wire. Hopefully I can get a good view there of that. Yeah, okay. Now like I said, all alternators are gonna be like this. So this connection right here is called your center tap. Now, let me get a piece of paper here to demonstrate this. Now, I, if I remember right, I demonstrated this in my previous video that I had made. But that wire with all three connections to it, it's our center tap. This is that one wire, this black dot. And all three. Well, all three of these are going to have a coil coming off of it. Now, these coils, that's all these windings around in here. That's, that's your coils. Now, we're just demonstrating this by showing one, but there's actually several coils wound up in there. So then, now, into the coils here, here, and here, that's where we connect our ESC, our speed controller. So basically what this is, it is a three-phase motor. Uh, three-phase motors are very, very common. They're used in industrial stuff. Um, they're super common in radio control cars trucks airplanes nowadays for hobby use 
and I have one here we'll compare them also so anyways these three connections are the ones you want you do not want to mess with the connection that has all three wires running together you want to isolate that one off by itself and forget about it so your speed controller will hook up to the other three not that one so to kind of compare this I have here a this is a radio control airplane motor ah now what you see here it has three connections coming in here and somewhere in all this mess of coils you have the connection for all three of these come together so you see that all the coils here now the difference in this motor and our alternator is this RC motor is called a outrunner that means the inside of the motor stays stationary and the outside spins and that spins your shaft that is a outrunner motor now one that the outside stays stationary and the inside spins that's what in the RC world is called a in runner so outrunner the outside spins in runner the inside spins now another thing we have is when you tore your alternator apart remember them brushes that was on the back side of it two little spring loaded deals that made a connection to this back of the shaft here on these copper connections well those brushes are for the field coil now when you put 12 volts to that field coil you're basically making a large electromagnet out of the rotor now this here rotor i would have to pull this pulley and that nut off of it to pull it out um, to show you but it's also got a whole bunch of wiring wound on it so that creates a large electromagnet in it now back to the rc motor this is a permanent magnet motor as you can see all these here these are magnets that are glued in so as your speed controller energizes these coils in a certain order the same way it will do on the alternator it creates a magnetic field that attracts these magnets making the motor spin well that's what we're doing here is we're putting a we're putting power to the field coil which is on the rotor in here and that's magnetizing it and then as the speed controller in its certain order it's energizing these coils and it will make it spin so now other modifications we will have to do go back to my motor here that I already have running now you will need somehow or another to mount your brushes to your shaft to where they make connection to it um, that's where I say you're gonna have to get creative on that part um, I made for this motor this is a 3d printed part that I made for it that holds the brushes in there and I have my two wiring connections to the brushes um, you can take the brushes and possibly epoxy them to the housing of the motor somehow or another um, anything 3d print something um, my earlier video that I made you will notice I had part of the diodes and stuff on the back of the motor that these brushless these brushes <laughs> connect to so those mounted to that the part of the diodes now you can do that but you just leave the diodes and everything they have to stay disconnected so you can use that to mount this um, just get creative see what you can come up with as long as they make a really good connection and they allow the motor to spin nice and free so there's where you're gonna have to get creative now another thing you do is with the speed controller the speed controller has what's called bullet connectors on it now these bullet connectors these nice little gold plated connectors um, they're very very common nowadays in the RC world this is the male 
connection you'll need to make you some wires and if you're going to go that route with the bullet connectors you have to make you some wires and solder them onto it um you could use the crimp connectors even if you wanted to permanently mount this to your esc connect your wires to it um they're good enough for nasa's space shuttle they do use those believe it or not um, they're good enough for them, they're good enough for me, and I've never had any problems with them. So you can use the crampon connectors, even, to make your wiring connections. And then, once you get your alternator all together, got your brushes on it, they're making good connection, everything like that. Then, we're going to test the alternator. Now. Honestly, you should probably do this before you do all that work to make sure your alternator does not have a problem. Now I have here a multimeter here, and I have it set in the ohms. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to check my connections. Now remember that center tap? I'm going to go to it. Good. I'm going to make note of the ohms. Good. Good, those all come out the same. So I know that these coils are perfectly fine. I am also gonna test each connection on my rotor, my field coil. Now this here, make note of it, write it down. This one here is 2.9, 2.9 ohms. So I'm gonna make a note of that here, 2.9 ohms now we're going to use that to figure out how many amps our field coil is going to draw so now that we have all the connections you can go through and check them in any combination here just to make sure everything's good we're going to take and go off of them and i'm going to check to the body of the alternator make sure nothing's shorted out inside of it to the body the coils to the body of the alternator and this one here is good my other alternator that i've been running it also tests out really good all right so that's what you need to do to modify your alternator and to check it to make sure it's going to be in good order to run now once you have everything your brushes everything all done then it's time to move along to the next video. Well, in the next video, we're going to get down to building the circuitry, the breadboard with the Arduino. We're going to get down to doing that, how to hook all that up to the alternator. That way you have that to control the speed controller and also to control the power to the field coil. So, until next time, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy this videos. Hope you're getting something out of them and can put it to some kind of use. I would be very curious to see whatever you end up with doing with this. So thanks for watching and until next time. See ya.